But anyway, it's anime day, and we watched one new show. It's not that new, but... It's a movie, actually. Yeah, it's a movie called uh, Kazeo Mita Shonen, or The Boy Who Saw the Wind. I like it a lot. It, it's all right. I liked it. It's it. A lot of people think it's a Ghibli movie. In fact, on Nausicaa.net, it's on the page of movies that are commonly mistaken for Ghibli movies, and many VCD bootlegs of this movie have the Studio Ghibli uh, logo on them. When I first downloaded it, uh, it was pretty much just I was on the anime ski and I saw a torrent for uh, the boy who saw the wind Ghibli style movie and I said, "Well, I never heard of this, but I'll get it," and I got it. And we I watched it alone a long time ago and forgot most of it, but we watched it all together again just this weekend. See, it's all right. It's really pretty. Like it, it looks like it's just in a really old style, but the style is really well done. I think it was done in two thousand. It's or it's not that old. Yeah, but it looks a lot older than it is. Hmm. And it's just the typical, you know, there's a boy, he has a power, he goes on an adventure to save people, and it's good, but it's kind of simplistic. Like, there's good guys, they're perfect, there's bad guys, they're absolutely sillily evil. Oh, the bad guy, yeah. Yeah, the bad guy is like, imagine Hitler only... I think they could have made that a little better if they would have uh, added some... They they could have shown the uh, the rebellion sometimes in a bad light. Like, look, they're killing people too. Yeah, but they no. always had the bad guys with those like masks on, so that you know that when they do that kind of thing, if they would have humanized those guys in the masks a little bit more to make the rebellion seem you know not perfect and great, and if they would have had that uh, evil scientist lady not turn insane. Yeah, they should have actually like made her someone who is nice. And is like forced into evil, so you kind of like feel bad for her instead of going, ah, she's yeah. a crazy nut, get rid of her. Which is what they seem to start doing right away. And like, then they just like, forget And then about they're it. like, all right, she's crazy. They make her crazier than Ritsuko's mom from Ava. Yeah, every other anime seems to do it the way I just described. This one was just like, forget it, it's not worth the effort. But I it mean, was still good. It was just, it was really simplistic. Like every time they needed to move the main character somewhere else for a change of scene or to move the plot along, they'd have him fall from a great height, be knocked unconscious, and wake up in a strange land. Yeah, they did that twice right at the beginning. Yeah. It was great. It happens a grand total of three freaking times. Yeah. They need, uh, an they, only they need hope. another way to move the plot. They need an only hope or a trap. It's a trap. Trap. But it's definitely worth watching. I mean, I enjoyed it. And there's a lot of good characters. It's real sad at points. Uh, we can't ruin the end, and I suggest you watch it because there's a twist that I didn't see coming. Yeah, I mean, I'd seen it before, and I forgot what happened at the end, and then I was like, all right. Uh. Not like, like the other ones where there's a twist that it was so strong you remember it. That way when you see it again, you're like, ooh, 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 it's going to happen again. It's yeah. just a, it's a, it's a twist you don't see coming. That's really all I can say. Mm. I did not expect the movie to end the way it did. It was a good ending. I, I don't think, think so. I don't, I don't think there could have been a, a better ending for what they had already done in the show. Had the ending not been the way it was, I probably would have written the show off because other than that, it was just kind of a typical, predictable... See, that was the worst thing. It was pretty much 100% predictable. Watch, other than the twist, every single thing that happens, you can predict from like the previous two things that happened. Mm. And as we as we were all watching the show, because we watched it at the party, we had everyone here, and it was basically just everyone was yelling out, oh, obviously blah, blah, blah is going to happen, and then blah, blah, blah happens. It's like every time there's a happy scene, there's a sad scene right after it that pretty much is a direct thing that ruins whatever was happy. So that's a problem, though, with, with all kinds of things these days, is that when you've seen enough anime or you've seen enough movies or television over the course of your life, everything gets predictable. And you need to watch really complex or really weird stuff to find something that's not predictable. Yep. You the know? thing is, even they get predictable because the, the unpredictability itself becomes predictable. Yep, it's like, oh, he's going to do the opposite of what's normally going to happen, so he's going to do this. Oh, I got it right. Yep. Like, we started a while ago, we were watching, like, Hitchcock movies. We were watching the old Hitchcock movies, like, early in his career. Mm -hmm. Like, they're... They're good, but they're hard to watch and just old. And, like, in the first one, I figured out what was going to happen, like, you know, right before it happened at the end. Yep. But then later on, I was, like, saying what was going to happen, like, 
like minutes and minutes before it happened. Because back then, like it seems like the big thing with movies back then was to put a twist at the end. Like every movie had a twist. Well, at the no, end. that's not the big thing back then. That's Hitchcock's thing. And no, all I've his... seen a lot of other movies from that era. Well, that of had... course, but Hitchcock is like the twist master. Yep. The problem was once you like start figuring out how the twists work, you always predict the twist because it's always you just think, what's the least likely thing to happen? Well, that's obviously how the movie's going to end. Well, it's not the least likely thing to happen. The least likely thing to happen is something crazy. It's, the least likely thing to happen that is still possible to happen. It's not really something that's least likely. It's actually very likely. It's just unexpected. Nah. It's the thing that is most unexpected to happen, but still makes a whole lot of sense and is very exciting. A lot of times, though, they didn't make sense. Those are the bad Hitchcock movies that no one remembers. Yeah, like the one, I don't remember which one it was, where they're, they're conflicted, the bunch of characters are conflicted about killing someone, and then they end up not even having to worry about it because a freaking bomb blows up the train they're on and the guy dies anyway. Yeah, that's just something crazy. But like 39 Steps is very make sense, you know, and... and uh, yeah. Yeah. Though also highly predictable. Some of it was highly predictable, but it's one of those things where... You can predict it if you remember everything that happened in the movie because the twist is something that you forgot that happened way at the beginning. Though regardless, this movie is highly predictable. If you've seen like three or four other anime in your life, you'll probably just know exactly what's going to happen in this whole show. But it'll still be fun. If you like Ghibli movies and things, then if you've seen them all and you're looking for more of that and Ghibli doesn't supply frequently enough and you're bored and you want a movie to watch... Boy Who Saw the Wind is great. There's also a really funny... He ends up wake one of the times when he gets knocked out and wakes up somewhere. He wakes up in this village. And apparently their sole source of food is hunting these Zabby. Zabby. Zabby are giant fucking man-eating, kill-you-all fish. Like a whale barracuda mix thing. Like a bunch of villagers die and they finally take down this fish and then they have a big feast. And then later, And then everyone in the room with us is like, why don't they just hunt smaller fish or something? This is kind of silly. And then in the show, one character's like, why do we hunt these stupid Zabby all the time? Yeah, that was great. I think they were trying to make a comment about like vegetarianism or something, and then whoever made the show gave the message that's not good. Yeah, the moral of the show is really heavy-handed. Yeah, it was like you're disrespecting the Zabby by not eating it. Like, it's already dead, you know, and... You know, we eat it, and it eats us, and it's come... You know, they tried to make a message out of it. That was pretty, uh... Yeah. Not, not deep in its presentation. Like, the evil dictator at the end, when he, like... I'll try to do this without ruining anything. Basically, at the end of the movie, when the evil dictator, whatever is happening to him, he pretty much is like, Oh, I wasn't evil. I was just lonely. <laughs> yeah, it's like they say it like right out, whereas other shows are more subtle and yeah, subtle is intellectually not the show. stimulating. The show is is definitely not subtle. Not subtle at all. It's hard to be subtle when you have a kid flying around and uh, you know a cute little animal going. Me, 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 me. Oh yeah, the cute little animal. I totally forgot about that. And then they had the cute little animal babies. Yeah, that was really cute. Too cute. I mean, I seen cute things, but those the little babies were just like where the tail was more than half the body. <laughs> oh my god. I think they were supposed to be foxes. If for nothing else, you should just watch the show to see the cute animal. And that was Geek Nights with Rem and Scott. Special thanks to DJ Pretzel for the opening music. Thanks for listening. Please remember to point your favorite podcatcher at feeds.feedburner.com slash geeknights to get the latest episodes as soon as they're released. Also, please visit our website at www.frontrowcrew.com for the latest updates and forum discussion. And whether you love or hate our podcast, we won't know unless you send your feedback to us at geeknights at gmail.com.